right now on Indianapolis This Week, a Sunday morning exclusive. No regrets. Whatsoever. No, no regrets whatsoever. I, I, I stand up for what I believe in. Senator Mike Delf sits down for his first one-on-one -on -one interview since being punished for taking on his leadership on the same-sex marriage amendment. We discuss the political fight, his punishment, and the future of his party. Plus, the mayor of Indianapolis preparing for the state of the city. How will Indy tackle public safety? And are we really getting a new soccer stadium in downtown Indianapolis? From RTD6, the Indy Channel, this is Indianapolis This Week with Rafael Sanchez. We begin with a Sunday exclusive, Senator Mike Delf, whose tweets opposing the same-sex marriage amendment stirred the political pot and got him punished. HJR 3 is now history. An attempt to revive the measure in the Senate last Monday, it failed. The second sentence barring civil unions was removed from that bill, pushing the amendment until 2016. Uh, joining us now exclusively is Republican Senator Mike Dow, who represents Indiana's 29th district, which includes Carmel, Indianapolis, and Zinesville. You can find him on Twitter at Mike Delf. Senator Delf, welcome to the program. You took a tough stance on HJR 3. You criticized your leadership, and this is what's happened to you. They've punished you by imposing these sanctions. You're losing your position as the Assistant Leader of Communications. You're losing your ranking title on the Judiciary Committee. You're going to lose your Press Secretary and your seat's going to be uh, rearranged in the Senate chamber. Is that punishment fair, or is it too excessive? You know, whenever you stick up for your convictions and, you've, and your values and um, you take a stand, there are consequences to, the, to taking a stand. And um, when I held my press conference, I knew that there would be consequences, and I accept the consequences. Any regrets? You were really tough on Twitter. You went after some churches. You were very pointed in your commentary. You did not hold back. Any regrets about what you said on Twitter last week? No regrets. Whatsoever? No, no regrets whatsoever. I, I, I stand up for what I believe in, for my convictions, for my constituents. Over 60% of my constituents wanted the chance to vote on HJR 3 in 2014 and unfortunately the process and leadership took that that right away from them what is the future now for the same-sex marriage amendment we know that for now it will not be on the ballot on 2014 but there's a group called the national organization for marriage that wants to weighing its options to see if they can put this on the ballot this year should they pursue that or should we just let it go well the legislature spoke clearly that they don't want the voters to vote on this in 2014 and I don't think uh, any type of judicial activism is acceptable uh, because the legis legislature weighed in on this um, I don't support them going to court uh, to try to force this on the ballot. I think that would be a bad move. Do you think in 2016 we'll be back at the same spot, or do you think we'll just try to skip over this? Uh, I, I think that there was a concerted effort to kill this issue, and uh, I would be very, very surprised if it's ever brought back to the Indiana General Assembly. Freedom Indiana, were they powerful in this argument? Because you also had Advance America on the other side. But did Freedom Indiana have the upper hand in this campaign? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the folks at Freedom Indiana. I know I have a couple constituents that were involved with them that showed up to my town meetings, and they were always very cordial. Um, but they, they, were, they were there when they needed to be there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, evangelical Christian conservatives were not there when they needed to be there. And I found it very ironic that our state house pastors day was the day after we voted on hjr3 in the indiana state senate they were a day late and a dollar short will you pay for that though because you've been very critical of the churches will you when it's your turn to run again will they come out and remind you of your criticism of them you know anybody is free to exercise their political rights in any way they see fit and so you know i, I stand by what i've done i stand by what i've said and I have no regrets. Uh, you have a supermajority in both the House and the Senate. Were you surprised that the supermajority could not get this through? We have supermajorities in both the House and the Senate. Uh, most of my colleagues are professed Christian conservatives, and we have the most marriage amendment friendly governor that we could ever possibly have, which is why I said at my press conference, if we're not going to get it to the people in 2014, it ain't ever going to happen. What does this rest of the session look like? Because this issue really sort of consumed a lot of the session. Will we see anything done on pre-K, on the personal business property tax, on any other issue, jobs, transportation? Will anything else come out of the General Assembly this year? Well, I think the, um, the pre-K initiative was sent to summer study committee by the Senate Committee on Education.
conversation this week. Uh, we still are trying to resolve the differences between what the governor uh, proposed, House Bill 1001 and Senate Bill 1 in the area of personal property tax. I think we still have a chance to get something done in that area. But recall that the legislative session, uh, the short session, is designed to be for emergency purposes only. And so we're really not supposed to be engaging in a lot of substantive public policy debates, but things have changed uh, in that definition as well. Uh, but we have about three weeks left in the session, and, and uh, I hope uh, that we get something done in the area of personal property tax relief. The reason I ask you about the supermajority is I, I've just been sort of, as a, someone who doesn't cover the legislature every day, that here the governor has his party in control of both, and is having a hard time getting his people, both ladies and gentlemen, to follow his agenda. He's having a hard time on the pre-K program, on the tax program, uh, why isn't the, his party helping him out? You know, that's a great question. Um, you know, I said in my press conference, the president pro tem of the Senate and the Speaker of the House are the two most powerful positions in state government. And they have a lot of uh, uh, ability to assign members to committee, to assign bills to committee, to set legislative priorities and to move bills through the legislative process. And so that's probably a better question asked to them than to me. Tomorrow you will be taking on the do not call list, one of the most popular laws in Indiana history because no one really likes telemarketers, at least during right. the dinner hour or on Sunday morning when they're trying to get to church. What will you do to try to strengthen the do not call list? Law? Well, I, I was trying to um, get rid of all the exemptions in Indiana's do not call list. And uh, ultimately what we decided to do was to introduce a resolution uh, in concert with efforts by the Indiana Attorney General to try to get the FCC to take another look at what they're doing because of the fact that technology has changed and so traditional regulatory barriers have broken down a little bit. And so we're trying to get the FCC to do what they can do on top of what the state of Indiana is doing with our own do not call list. Uh, but yes, if we could you know, mit mitigate the number of phone calls that, the number of unwanted phone calls, I should say, that people are getting at home, I think we will have provided a service. And there are some calls that people do want to receive, but we still are receiving a lot of these, what we call robocalls, the automated calls. And hopefully, will this law address those? Because that seems to be what people are really upset about, is hearing some automated call drone on for minute sure. upon minute upon minute. Th this resolution would direct the FCC per the Indiana General Assembly to try to look into those issues, absolutely. Senator Mike Dell, thank you so much. Good luck with your bill. And Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. The National Organization for Marriage has decided not to force HDR3 to the ballot box in 2014. The group says it will spend its time preparing to elect what they call a strong pro-amendment legislature.